My name, my name is Marcelo Costa. I work for the National Water Agency of Brazil. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the invitation from UNESCO and the University of Kyoto to chair this session and make this presentation. Well, uh, my presentation is about uh, the implementation of a national framework for water quality monitoring in Brazil. It has been a work of the last, uh, I guess, five years. And uh, I guess we have some important lessons that uh, I would like to share with you. Uh, this is a quick overview of uh, water quality monitoring in Brazil. Uh, water quality started in the 70s in Brazil when the first state ages state monitoring was established. The current situation is that uh, now we have 17 of 26 states uh, that have water quality monitoring, about 2,000 points. The number of parameters varies from 8 to 50, and the sampling uh, also varies. Uh, the state points are in green. And we also have a federal network composed of more than 1,000 sample points, only five parameters, and the sampling is quarterly. So uh, we see we have different strategies, uh, both at state level and the national level. In this map, you can see we have a, a good uh, cover of sampling or, uh, along the coast. But in the Amazon region, we don't have some, some uh, good monitoring. Well, uh, which are the main issues about water quality monitoring in Brazil? We have information gaps, like I said, especially in the Amazon basin, where the logistics of monitoring is more complicated because we don't have many roads or cities to make the, 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 the analysis of the water after the collection. In general, uh, few parameters are monitored. Uh, uh, I said that some states have 50 parameters, but uh, this is, and, uh, is not the rule. We have a lack of a national standard for water quality monitoring. States are monitoring in different uh, strategies and frameworks. A lack of integration between uh, the networks of water quality and water quantity. Water quality is most a responsibility of environmental agencies and water quality is in water resources agencies. And these are those, uh, these are two uh, different words. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's another important issue. Uh, there's also a problem of lack of resources to maintain networks in some states. We have some poor states that don't have the, the resources. Uh, and finally, we have a few information available uh, to society. And in 2003, we have a national law on access to environmental information that established that all states have to develop uh, water quality reports. So, uh, considering that situation, in 2010, the National Water Agency uh, started to do national water quality monitoring program that has uh, the main goals uh, to eliminate information gaps in the country about our water quality, increase the reliability, reliability of information uh, available, and ensure that water quality data are comparable between states, and also to make water quality information available to society. Uh, this program was divided in four main uh, components. The first was the creation of a national water quality monitoring network. This national network is composed by the state networks and the federal networks uh, with the same monitoring strategy, using the same criteria and uh, sharing the data to a national database. A second component is the establishment of uh, national standards for water quality monitoring that uh, I will talk later. 
Uh, a third component, obvious, uh, is capacity building, which is very important to many states in Brazil. And the last uh, component is assessment and reporting, uh, so we can make information available to society. Now I, I will describe in more detail those components. Well, uh, the greatest uh, source of water pollution in Brazil is uh, domestic sewage. In this map you can see the load of sewage, you can see a high concentration in Sao Paulo, Rio, other cities along the, the, the Atlantic coast where most of the population is concentrated. Uh, in the Amazon we don't have uh, large sources of uh, sewage. Uh, the main problem is the, the access for uh, treated sewage only 38% of the sewage is treated and uh, 46 is uh, collected. This is a major problem in the country. But uh, uh, last year we started the implementation of a national sanitation plan that has the goal to reach 93% of sewage, co co uh, sewage collection and treating by uh, 2030 with an investment of more than $200 billion. So this is a huge challenge for the country. Well, based in, on that map of uh, sewage load, we divided the country in three regions. The coastal region in blue, which established uh, the goal of uh, one point of monitoring for 1,000 square kilometers a more uh, higher density of sampling for water quality monitoring. On the other hand, in the Amazon Basin, where we don't have too much uh, loads or sources of pollution, the density is, is lower. And we have this yellow uh, region that is a transition between those uh, two regions. So, uh, we didn't have to make it. Uh, we didn't have to to, to have the same uh, density of sampling here along all the country because uh, this region is much more populated than the, the other regions. Well, the national uh, water quality monitoring network it has a main goal to analyze the trends of surface water quality. So I'm not talking about uh, early warning network, it's about trends. You want to analyze water quality along the years to see what's happening. Uh, it has also to go to evaluate if water quality guidelines are being met. That's an important issue. And also to verify the effectivity of water quality management. Like I said, we have this national sanitation plan, so we want to analyze all the years if the increase in sanitation is causing an improvement in water quality of the rivers. Uh, this network was created in 2013. Now it has around 2,000 sampling points, and the goal is to have more than 4,000 sampling points in 2020. This is the, the project of the network, considering those uh, goals for uh, sampling point density. You see that the density of sampling points is, is larger here than the Amazon Basin. So this, this is a huge challenge to implement. We have uh, 26 states with, with different conditions for monitoring. And uh, over the last two years, we have uh, started the implementation of this network. We also created a national field guide to water sediment and biological sampling. So now we have a national standard for monitoring. This guide was developed by CETESB, which is the Sao Paulo Environmental Agency. It, it was put on national consultation for contribution for about uh, five months. It also includes some videos showing the main water sampling methods. 
the states uh, request us to develop those videos because it's better to have a video showing the methodology. It's easier for them to, to understand the methodology. We define uh, 22 parameters uh, that has to be monitored by all states. This is the, uh, a minimum list. If the states want to monitor 50 parameters, it's okay. But all states have to monitor at least those parameters. Uh, of course, we have those basic uh, physical chemical parameters, uh, bio -Ds, is chemical oxygen the net, IOC, the solids, uh, microbiological, biological, like chlorophyll A and phytoplankton, and the nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. Well, uh, we don't have here uh, heavy metals, we don't have pesticides, and our strategy uh, right now is to make uh, specific studies for uh, these uh, parameters. So if I have a, a basin with heavy metal problems, you go, we go there and make uh, a study. Uh, Brazil now is the largest consumer of pesticides in the world, and we have very few information. Tomorrow, Gisela is going to talk about this issue. And uh, I guess in the future, we are going to have some kind of screen of pesticides in Brazil so we can, we can establish some parameters, some pesticides in the national network. Well, the greatest part of this program is to support the state's network. Uh, since 2013, states uh, have agreed with those goals with ANA the National Water Agency, that they have to monitor on that frequency, on that uh, density of sampling points and those 22 parameters. So far, 15 states have uh, received vehicles, boats, uh, equipment. We spent about $6 million uh, on this uh, support to states. Uh, states have to share the, the data in the national uh, database to receive the support. And we expect an uh, operational cost of about uh, $5 million a year on 2020 when the network is fully implemented. We also have a capacity building. Uh, so far we have uh, courses on water quality monitoring. 2012, 2015. There are very practical courses on the field, people learning to collect water samples. We are also planning for this year a laboratory intercalibration study with 16 states. This is also very important to, to maintain the quality of data in the country. Well, regarding water quality assessment, 2012, we launched this report during the Rio Plus 20 conference. We use uh, three major indicators of water quality, the National Sanitation Foundation Water Quality Index, which is the most used index in Brazil, the Trophic State Index, and the Canadian Index, uh, the Canadian Council of Ministers of Environment which is uh, index developed in the year 2000. We have also a summary available in English and Spanish. If you uh, want to download, I can give you the, the website. A map of water quality index in Brazil, of course, we have a huge gap in the Amazon, but here you can see the major uh, contaminant uh, river basins, and the, it was interesting because we divided uh, urban plus rural sampling points from urban sampling points, and you can see that here 75 of the points have good condition, but if you look at the urban sampling points, about uh, 47 
percent of the points had bad or very bad condition because most of the, the pollution is sewage, it's concentrated on the cities. So it's very important when you talk about water quality index to make this separation because along the years we only show this and people said, ah, 75% is good, and that's, that's no problem. But when you show uh, in urban areas, it's different. This, for, for me, this is the most important uh, slide. Uh, we made a trend analysis for 10 years uh, periods of that index. Uh, we made this analysis for uh, 400 sample points and we found around 47 points that had an increase in water quality and 45 points that had a decrease in water quality. And uh, we, we were able to establish a connection between uh, investments in sanitation and water quality improvement. Most of those basins here and here and here had some investments in sanitation, uh, creation of new uh, sewage treatment plants, and uh, we are able to see an improvement. On the other hand, those uh, yellow triangles show uh, some basins where the population has increased and uh, it didn't have sanitation investments, so water quality has decreased. This is a very important information for water management. This information was very used for, by sanitation agencies to show the improvement of their activities. Traffic state index is also very interesting. Um, I'm not going into details, but we separate length in a lot of environments. We also see the critical areas. Eutrophication is a major problem in Brazil. Well, the media coverage was very, very interesting. We, this, these are headlines of newspapers and websites in Brazil. Of course, most of you don't, don't read Portuguese, but uh, like they say, uh, bad news sells newspapers. <laughs> most of the headlines are talking about urban rivers that are very polluted more than 45% uh, of the rivers in urban areas are contaminated. But it's important because now we are starting to create some culture about uh, water quality information in Brazil. The main challenges, of course, is the implementation of the network in these nine states that do not have monitor networks. They are mostly in the Amazon basin. Uh, like I said, it's complicated to monitor. We need more effective communication with society. We need also integration with transboundary basins because in the Amazon we are downstream. Uh, we, we receive waters from Peru, Bolivia and Colombia. But in La Plata basin we are upstream. We send out water for Argentina and Uruguay. In the future, we have also to include uh, new methods like biological monitoring, toxicity, remote sensing. Of course, this uh, network has to evolve. Regarding remote sensing, we already had a program called Hydrosat. It's a cooperation with uh, France. We are now uh, monitoring some sampling points in the Amazon for discharge and also some sample points for chlorophyll, turbidity and suspended solids. It's very interesting, the results are very, very interesting and I think this is the future for monitoring in, in many places. Conclusions? Well, uh, the important aspects of this implementation process, I guess, one of them is the Open Data Access Policy, the national law on access to environmental information. So now all the states, all the states have to share water quality data. It was a huge effort to 
consensus building uh, to develop those national criteria, discussions along uh, three years. Uh, capacity building, of course, is very important. And now we have some states sharing knowledge, some more developed states helping the less developed states. Financial support, of course, uh, basically federal resources to strengthen uh, states' monitoring. And uh, finally, the information. Uh, I guess that even uh, with information gaps, it is important to produce those reports because it show uh, uh, how much you don't know about the, the water quality situation. Thank you very much, and uh, uh, I invite you all to the World Water Forum in Brasilia 2018. Uh, I, have to, I hope to see you there. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Marston. Uh, my question is regarding to the uh, sampling density. You mentioned that. Coastal area, uh, we are planning for a sampling density one point per 1,000 square kilometer. So, is it enough uh, to capture the, the spatial and temporal degradation of the uh, water quality in that uh, coastal areas? Because, you know, like in 1,000 square kilometer, uh, probably the rivers are re regulated and there might be different uh, industrial zones that uh, you have to monitor in different points of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we took this this density from the European uh, framework. Uh, we think that this region of Brazil has uh, some kind of similarity in terms of population density. But uh, in fact, I, I don't know if this is enough or we're, if you're going to, to include more points. Or maybe in the end we are going to reduce the number of, of sending points. I saw your work, uh, we were talking, uh, I guess in the future we are going to have uh, some kind of cluster analysis to see if sending points are uh, also really necessary or if, if you can reduce the number of sending points. But, uh, Right now, I can, I, can, I can say that this is enough for if we need more or less sample points. So, uh, the points are primarily only for surface water, not only, only surface water. Uh, the National Water Agency has another program for groundwater. But it's beginning. Uh, surface water is more advanced. Now, is it possible for you to get your data uh, plugged into uh, the system for modeling? Oh yeah, yes, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, from there. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Marcel, I was wondering. Uh, I'm trying to link your the index of polluted systems to eutrophication. Uh, and I guess the reason I'm interested in that is because the issue, the general issue with eutrophication tends to be that non-point sources are increasingly becoming a, mm -hmm. a main you know, problem. But a lot of your pollution sources tend to be urban, yeah. or, you know, what you call polluted systems. So what's the link between the polluted waters or systems and eutrophication potential in Brazil. Is there a is there a direct strong link between those urban sources or is the problem also the more diffuse uh, yeah. non-point source yeah. issues like fertilizers and, you know, that Yeah, kind of I, I really don't know. I think we have both. Uh, we don't have uh, any uh, estimation of uh, Point sources. We do have some good uh, good information about uh, point sources, but non point sources we, we don't have too much information. But I guess in the end uh, we have both because fertilizer user in Brazil is also 
huge and uh, we have many pots in rural areas but we we don't see too much nutrients most of the time in rural areas most of the problem is in urban rivers uh, because of phosphates in detergents and so on You have uh, about 1,800 sampling points. Do you analyze monthly or seasonally? And what is the capacity of the labs to uh, analyze this huge number of samples? Huge number of sampling points. Several points. For us, really, it's not a huge problem because we have the computer capacity and personnel to, to analyze. And we, we have been doing this for six years. All, all year we, we received the data from states. We put this in the national database, calculate the index, make trend analysis, and make a national report uh, every year. So I, I don't see too much problem to increase for from 2,000 to 4,000 points. I think the main also question was, if you have so many numbers of sampling points and human capacity and technical capacity, or whether like each sampling point has a laboratory or human capacity, I think that was the main question. Ah, no, I understand. The human capacity of so many numbers of sampling points. Because it will require substantial labor and the investment and funds yes. and yeah, yes, yes, that's, that's a big challenge, especially in states that don't, don't have the structure. We're going to, to spend too much money to, to make uh, laboratories, to, make, to, to give it equipment and capacity building also. So, like I said, the, the biggest challenge is to implement uh, networks in nine states that today don't have uh, any monitoring. Quarterly. Yeah. Yeah, quarterly. At least the, there are some states monitoring every month, but most of them are monitoring quarterly. And for a trend network, uh, we think this is enough. Excuse me, I, I, I have to, to finish because we have other speakers. Uh, I don't think it's fair for them.